Hi, in this screencast, I'll quickly show you how to export partial panoramas. Partial panoramic images have a field of view of less than 360 degrees. Begin by dropping your panorama into the input area of the project window. And then choose Select Input and select Cylinder as the image type and then enter the image's angle into the Field of View box. Now if you're using the latest version of Pano 2 VR, you can skip this step and change the horizontal field of view in the Viewing Parameters section, which we'll get to next. Here you can determine your default view using the Preview image and then clicking Set to fix the view. Here's the horizontal field of view option that appears in the latest version. You can set the image's field of view here if you haven't already done so in the Select Input options. Just like with full spherical panoramas, you can also add hotspots and sounds. So for this project, we'll simply add a background sound. In the QuickTime settings, you can set the height of the image in pixels. And Pano 2 VR gives you a hint for good resolution based on the default view and the window size. Subtiles separate cylindrical panoramas in vertical pieces for progressive download. 24 is the default value, which means there are 24 slices that are 10 degrees wide for this particular image. If you don't want or you don't need your movie to progressively download, you could enter one here to have just one slice and have the movie download all at once. Under the display settings is something called correction, which gives you the option to disable or enable 3D distortion. If you choose to have 3D distortion, your panoramic image will have the 3D effect. When 3D distortion is disabled, you'll get a flat panoramic image and the 3D effect is lost. So if you wish to not have this 3D effect and you're using the latest version, it's probably best to use the flat image input type instead. When outputting the image to flash, you notice that the settings aren't much different than the settings for exporting a QuickTime movie. You can adjust the cylinder height and also choose to correct for 3D distortion or not. One difference I'd like to point out is that if you enable auto rotation, the movie will rotate, or more accurately, pan to the left or right, and once it reaches the edge of the image, it'll stop and reverse its rotation. This type of auto rotation only works for flash. In QuickTime, it'll rotate, but it'll stop and not continue when it hits the edge. Transforming the image is also similar to transforming a full panoramic image. You'll see when you open the transformation settings that the partial panorama only covers a small portion of a sphere. So if you want to extract a part of your image and keep the straight lines, your best option here is rectilinear image. You can choose to use the default view that was set in viewing parameters or to override it by adjusting the sliders to define the area to be exported. Images that show the empty areas and are saved as ping or TIFF will have this area saved as transparent and then you can further modify the image in your editor of choice. And that's it for this screencast.